Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to talk about the Unreal Engine. Alright, I kid. No more Unreal Engine news for today. Instead, we are talking about a different game engine. Today we are talking about Zenko. Now, Zenko is an open source game engine. It was open sourced by Silicon Studios about a year ago. Uh, it's C-sharp powered engine. The tooling runs on Windows. Sorry to the rest of you, I do not know how well this runs under Wine. Uh, but it is capable of targeting all of the major platforms you can think of. And the reason why we are talking about it today is because Zenko 3.1 was released. And at this point in time, normally what I would do is jump in and take a look at the release notes. But the release notes, as we will see in a few minutes, are a little bad. So first we're going to just actually take a look at Zenko itself, give you a quick hands-on with the engine, uh, take a look at the features of the engine, and then we will get to said release notes. So if you're interested in grabbing or downloading Zenko, it is available at Zenko.com. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is completely open source under the MIT source license with the source code hosted on GitHub. Uh, if you want to see Zenko in action, this is Zenko in action. As you can see, it has a full-blown level editor. Uh, we can navigate around the road quite nice. This is running on a 970M. The performance is quite solid. Uh, behind the scenes, you are using C Sharp as your programming language. You can see you've got your typical level placement with a level created. It has a number of different components. So it's kind of the typical component composition type uh, setup. You have a lot of control over the rendering environment. Behind the scenes, your code is actually um, handled in um, Visual Studio 2019 for some obscene reason. We'll get back to that in a few seconds. And one of the major details about this particular release is the move towards NuGet is now complete. So if you're interested, what you can do is you can now um, handle the entire game engine as NuGet packages. So here we go. We'll look at the NuGet packages for this system, and you will see that this particular project has included Included the core, um, the engine, the particle systems, and UI, and so on. So it has all been split out into NuGet packages. So if you need to get more, uh, we can go back over here to the browse, and we can search over here for Zenko, like this. And you will see NuGet is broken into a number of different packages. So if you want to get more specific uh, things you want to bring into your project, you just add them via NuGet and down they come. So those are the various different pieces. It's been split out to uh, several different NuGet powered packages. Otherwise, your process is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can attach game scripts directly. You, you inherit from a base class such as async or synchronous scripts. And then you handle the callbacks, things like start and update. And you use the C-sharp programming language to control your game's logic. This is a script controlling the entire game. Here's one controlling the character in specific. Um, you have con fine-tuned control over the rendering. Uh, yeah, so basically that is Zenko from the programming side of things. And once again, this is Zenko from the editor side of things. You've got full support for... Um, uh, prefabs or instancing and so on. Uh, you've got asset browsers down here so we can switch between scenes quite simply. Uh, you got graphic previews of everything you're working with. For example, here is a model. Um, it's, we've got material views with inset models. You can drill down and give a whole lot of details for defining uh, how things are done. Obviously, you have particle systems and shaders and so on. So all of the stuff that you would come to expect from a modern game engine, they're here. Uh, they're definitely here in Zenko. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of the idea. You can deploy to a number of different packages. Now let's head back over to Zenko3D.com and we'll take a quick look at the features. So we just saw the studio. Obviously, you use that to um, you know, create the graphics in your world or to instance the graphics in your world, set up the properties, set up the shaders, uh, attach scripts, and so on. We have a graphic composer, as I meant, compositor, sorry. Uh, meant there is a lot of fine-tuned graphic control in here. You've got the support of nested prefabs, and it didn't take 65 versions for that to actually happen. Uh, we have a full-blown UI editor editor that is built directly in. You've got the scene editor. We saw this in action. There is a sprite editor. So if you're working in 2D, a curve editor as well. We got advanced graphics options, a full PBR material workflow, light probes, and uh, DirectX 12 and Vulkan renderers, particle systems, advanced shader language. This is sort of uh, a con uh, it's, it's a hybrid language over top of the HLSL shading system. Uh, post effects, um, C sharp scripting, screen as uh, scene streaming, uh, full physics, animation, multi threaded navigation. It is VR ready. There are VR samples. Uh, it actually comes with several different samples. So if you come back here to the installer, this is where you would add your newest version. Uh, when you go ahead and create a new project, you've got a number of different examples you can work from. There's also got a Visual Studio plugin. And finally, let us try to make sense of the 3.1 release notes. Now, if you are making a game engine, what I highly recommend you do is highlight your top 
5, 10, 15 features in the release. Um, and that's not really something that they've done here. They've really talked about the NuGet modular functionality. So one major change is turning the engine into modular NuGet packages published on NuGet.org. So you don't really need to use their installer. I don't think you can get everything through NuGet through your project. And it does make uh, upgrading and so on quite a bit easier. Now this is absolutely, utterly, and overwhelmingly bat crap insane. Uh, Visual Studio 2017 is no longer supported. Okay, so uh, I applaud them, absolutely applaud them for upgrading to Visual Studio 2019. I really hate when game engines take years to make this happen, but uh, let's just say 90% of the development community are still using Visual Studio 2017, maybe 80%. And I would argue there are probably more people using 2015 than 2019 at this point in time, just to get this thing up and running. I had to upgrade to Visual Studio 2019 on this machine, which you know I didn't really need it. I didn't want to go to the code, but point blank, this installer does not work unless you have Visual Studio 2019 installed and to the newest version. So this is crazy talk. Also, if you want to install Zenko, be sure that you do go into Visual Studio and run all of the updates because it seems like the installer fails otherwise. Uh, so go back here again. They are really stoked about this uh, 3.1 moving to NuGet. Uh, it was always a big proponent of NuGet. It was distributed as a NuGet package. Due to limitations, we were leveraging NuGet more as a distribution medium than a proper NuGet packages. Uh, it was monolithic in 3.1. Uh, 3.0 paved, paved the way by making Zen compatible with new project system. Game projects were referencing Zenko using package reference. Today, Zenko 3.1 brings Zenko as a smaller set of NuGet packages, each containing one assembly with proper dependencies. As a result, it is now possible to create a game project that references only the packages you want. Here are a few examples of our core packages, and then the optional packages that you can bring in. We already took a brief look at that. Um, so yeah, a lot of this release notes, and I mean a lot of this release notes, is all about the new NuGet stuff. Uh, and in the future, uh, Zenko 3.1 is still monolithic, editor support for UI, blah, 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 will be hard-coded. However, the target is to get rid of them and to allow plugins in the future. Uh, we also had a full switch to .NET standards. Uh, Zenko supports .NET standard for most of its runtime assemblies. Zenko games can run on .NET Core for both Windows and Linux. Um, Tutorials, there is now a tutorial section in the documentation. We'll look at that in just a second, uh, including a C-sharp beginner. 12 beginner programming concepts are uh, detailed. A bullet sharp was updated. That is uh, a C-sharp wrapper around the bullet physics engine. And then that's all that they break out. And then if you want to figure out what else is in this release, you have to go through um, the change log. And the change log is garbage. There's a lot of duplication in here. So there might be all kinds of stuff in this release, to be honest, beyond the, the NuGet support and change to .NET standard. It's just, you've got to read through this change log that just keeps going and has duplications over and over and over and over and over again, um, all the way throughout it. So we'll just keep scrolling. There might be something here that there might be something amazing in here. Uh, they bumped up to .NET 4.7.2. That's impressive. Uh, I, I don't, I don't have have a clue because this is a terrible change log. So I'm harping a bit, but I want to just let you know if you develop a game engine and you want people to do notes on it when it, it's released and, and changes happen, you're going to want to break out what is new uh, a bit more than just something like this as as we keep scrolling through, through the change logs. Um, yeah. So, oh, this one has an exclamation point. That must be important. Um, yeah. So if you want, of course, I will link this down below. So if you want to get into the full details of what was released in the set, um, sorry, 3.1 release, uh, there is a lot more than was highlighted. There's a lot more to it than just the NuGet changes. I just, unfortunately, uh, I don't know what they are. <laughs> so um, if you are making a game engine, I do recommend, highly recommend that you spend a bit of time on your release notes instead of something like this, because th this is borderline useless, frankly. But uh, again, that is it. And my other one piece of feedback, once again, is this, this once again is insane. Requiring people to upgrade to 2019 already. I, I love being on the bleeding edge. I really appreciate that. Uh, but that that is kind of crazy. Um, so you should definitely support at least 2017 soon. So again, 
congratulations on supporting 2019 so quickly. I wish every game engine did that, but don't 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 throw the baby out with the bathwater like that quickly. That is just insane. So, anyways, that is it. That is um, Zenko. It's it's a very very cool game engine. Uh, it's definitely one worth checking out. Open source, MIT licensed. As I mentioned earlier on, you're seeing chunkiness because for some reason my my screen capture is doing that all of a sudden, but it is a very performant engine. It works quite well. All of the tools and features and functionality you probably expect to see are here. The performance for loading things, the asset loading, the importing, it is all very good. Um, and I think I'm actually going to do another getting started 3D tutorial, a quick one on Zenko itself. So this is an engine I think more people should be exposed to. Um, yeah. So that is it, uh, 3.1. I wish I could go into uh, a bit more explicit detail of what all you're getting in this 3.1 release, but as you saw, I can't. All right, so that's it. Let me know what you think of Zenko. Zenko. Let me know what you think of Zenko in, uh, in the comments down below. And hey, at least it's not Unreal Engine news. We've had a lot of that lately. Uh, all right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.